A few years after the uptake of DVDs in millions of homes worldwide, there was a short-lived battle for the number one means of watching HD films on your own TV that could have gone either way. But as things transpired, it's Blu-ray discs we find on our shelves, while HD DVDs reside in the technology graveyard. So how did Blu-ray manage to dominate what was once a close race? What was so bad about HD DVD? And why did the two-way competition maybe become a bad thing in the long run for Blu-ray. Here's how it happened. In the late 70s, a format war broke out between the well-known VHS and Betamax, a video cassette owned by Sony who we'll come back to later. As you likely know, VHS emerged victorious from the face-off, only to be overthrown by the rise of DVDs two decades later. By 2005, there was a DVD player in 64% of American homes, and the takeover from VHS had well and truly taken place. But as technology improved at a faster and faster rate, HD television sets were also making their way into millions of living rooms, but without a means of playing your own HD content, given that DVDs were limited to standard definition. Seeing the gap in the market, two companies nailed their colours to the mast. Toshiba, who devised HD DVD, and Sony, who led the formation of Blu-ray. Both of these discs took the same size and shape as DVDs, but while the standard definition format used a 650 nanometer red laser to read its content, HD DVD and Blu-ray used a 405 nanometer wavelength blue laser, hence the colour in the latter's name. The result was the difference in storage storage space. With a single side DVD holding 4.7 gigabytes of data, HD DVD 15 gigabytes, and Blu-ray 25 gigabytes, albeit at a slightly higher manufacturing cost. With more storage, the two newcomers were able to provide 1080p video and superior sound quality to DVDs, and so when the two new formats were released in 2006, the latest format war began. At the start of the two-way battle, tech insiders were unsure as to which disc would come out on top, but everybody knew one of the key factors would be the allegiance of the big six film studios. Not wanting to estimate how many viewers would own each type of player, and on the assumption that consumers would be unlikely to buy both, the studios each picked a side, with Paramount Pictures, Universal, and Warner Brothers opting to release their features on HD DVD, and Disney, Fox, and Columbia Pictures, which was owned by Sony, going for Blu-ray. In late 2006 came the single biggest turning point in the whole saga, the release of Sony's PlayStation 3, which was capable of playing Blu-ray discs. Sony took a huge gamble by adding the technology to their console, as it came at a massive price, with the production cost of each unit sitting at around $700. This meant that even on their device's base model, which hit the market at an eye-watering $499, the company was still making a loss of $2 to $300. Their hope was that the uptake of PlayStation 3s would help cement Blu-ray as the disc of choice, as well as regaining profits from the sales of individual games and even the royalty Sony received from the purchase of any Blu-ray disc for their part in the technology's development. Although more HD DVD sales were made over the course of 2006, by 2007 the roles had been reversed. HD DVD had recruited Microsoft as an ally, with Bill Gates announcing the company's own plug-in HD DVD player accessory for Xbox 360. But sadly, the introductory price of $199 failed to attract significant interest and avoid the format's inevitable fate. The newest PlayStation looked like like a gamble worth taking, as by the end of 2007 the consoles provided a further 10 million Blu-ray players inside customers' homes. That was compared to the 300,000 units Microsoft had sold of its HD DVD accessory for Xbox. A trial was then conducted by movie rental giant Blockbuster to compare the popularity of the two rivals among its customers, and found that Blu-ray outsold HD DVD by a ratio of more than 
2 to 1, leading to the chain pulling all of its HD DVD rentals and switching its high definition focus to Blu ray. With other stakeholders appearing to jump ship, Warner Brothers was the first major studio to join the trend in January 2008, as Paramount and Universal followed suit just a month later. Netflix was no longer loaning HD DVDs, and America's biggest home movie retailer, Walmart, also stopped stocking the discs in their stores. This all came while Toshiba announced they would no longer manufacture HD DVD players and recorders, a sign that the wheels had well and truly come off, and the format was considered obsolete as soon as March of that year. Final estimates by experts from the industry placed Toshiba's total losses on the HD DVD project at around a billion dollars. But the legacy of the war that had taken place wasn't as rosy for Sony as you might think. The extortionate initial price of the PS3 may have cost them a few loyal gaming customers, who switched over to the more affordable Xbox 360, possibly becoming lifetime users of Microsoft's games consoles instead. And the fact that Blu-ray sales have plateaued and even tailed off in the last few years only casts further doubt over Sony's investment. Consumers had already built up an extensive DVD collection by 2006, and the added cost of a Blu-ray player, plus the $5 to $10 premium on the Blu-ray discs themselves, have seen their sales fail to overtake DVDs in their 15-year lifespan. But both formats have recently taken huge market share hits from the new kid on the block. Online streaming services. The subscription-based model has given users access to thousands of film and television titles, all for the price of less than one Blu-ray per month. As Netflix and Amazon both boast more than 200 100 million global members, maybe the battle that Sony fought so hard to win was all in vain after all. And that's how it happened.